if i take your one on one session late at night yes sir it will be fine okay 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 so any doubts from the last sessions those of you who have attended and some uh, i got uh, a few messages saying that uh, you people found it helpful I'm glad to hear that no questions okay so let's go forward now Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I'll probably shift it here so that it does not. Okay, so last time we covered uh, the two uh, fundamental laws of forest governance in India, uh, that is the IFA and the FCA. Okay, and this time we'll be covering the rest of the two uh, acts, that is the uh, IFA and WPA. Today we'll be covering FCA and uh, FRA. Okay, so first let's try to find out the question uh, answers to these questions. For what purposes a forest land can be diverted? Any one of you? We'll have a brief question and question and answer session. Whoever wants to answer, just check your knowledge. Hello. Hello, sir. Should I try? Yes, yes, yes. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Arvind. Sir, forest land can be used for both purposes, forestry as well as non-forestry. Forestry in terms of conservation, protection and Audio management. Is and shaky. In terms of sir, mining, uh, development, infrastructure, etc. Okay, development, infrastructure and all. Okay. Can it be used, uh, 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 can it be diverted to uh, uh, establish a college or a university? Yes, sir, for research purposes, as education purposes. Okay. Okay. What are the powers of a DFO in diversion of a forest land? What does the DFO do? What is the purpose of a FCA Act? If any one of you can tell me. Uh, sir, uh, preventing yes, the diversion of forest land. Uh, preventing uh, the probably diversion stages of forest land. Yes, Manoj. Huh. Yes, sir. So preventing the forest mm -hmm. of, uh, preventing the land, forest land uh, for non-forest uh, purposes. Mm -hmm. So how does it prevent uh, the diversion? Uh, sir, uh, central government's permission is required uh, uh, for uh, diversion. So now, uh, off late, uh, even Supreme Court's permission is also required. Okay, central government's permission is required. Yes, sir. Okay, good. And uh, uh, what is the difference between uh, the FCA, the original act, and the new one, Sandrakshan Evam Samvardhan Act? Many of you might have searched about the FCA, and you would have been confused about this new name. You would have got one, Sandrakshan Evam Samvardhan Act. Some of you might have been confused what is the difference between the two acts does one supersede other what is the difference sir uh, in the amended act uh, they have added the preamble sir okay in, and in the preamble uh, we have certain goals uh, which we try which mm -hmm. we are trying to achieve and uh, mm -hmm. there are certain exemptions as well 
given in the amended mm-hmm. act which are added mm mm-hmm. mm uh, such as uh, good and uh, certain activities mm-hmm. are not to be considered as uh, non forestry activities such as okay. agriculture operations wireless communications mm-hmm. check posts etc mm-hmm. good okay what is the difference between these uh, reservation and diversion of forest land sir when it comes to de reservation of forest uh, mm. uh, when we de reserve a forest the settlement of the forest uh, rights is not done sir mm. uh, but when it comes to diversion we are diverting it for non forestry purposes other than uh, uh, rights sir mm-hmm. some some were close but it is it is somewhat different uh, from this we'll we'll see uh, okay, what sir. is net present value uh, any one of you npv have you heard of this term npv okay uh, the question number 8 is interesting chalo npv is factual uh, it can be asked in the interview they will directly ask you they might like uh, what is npv but question number 8 uh, any one of you wants to answer this question what will you do as a dfo if there is a request from an mla for land under forest rights act Uh, so, this was an actual case, so I will discuss that case study also. Yes, tell me. Okay, sir, uh, is the question asking like if the MLA asks us to divert uh, for? Uh, he F- has uh, requested a land. Mm-hmm. He has applied for a land under FRA. Oh. Okay. Uh, sir, under FRA. only two categories mm-hmm. of people can uh, claim the rights the first is uh, scheduled mm-hmm. tribes or uh, forest mm-hmm. dwelling scheduled tribes and second is the other forest traditional dwellers if mla mm-hmm. uh, doesn't belong to both of them then sir mm-hmm. he is not eligible to have land within the fra or under the fra let, let's say that he is uh, uh, other traditional forest dweller still will so you sir, give him sir uh, then he has to believe like uh, he has to approve uh, like his family is living yes to last three generation like 75 years okay the, he, this condition is also fulfilled then but sir, it seems since he is mla and mm. certainly his condition would be uh, fine so sir in mm. that regard we have to look into sir is there any such condition in fra that these persons so, can be the only condition is uh, a traditional forest dweller and three generations economic status is it mentioned in fra Sir, I'm not sure. There are like 19 conditions. Out of 19, mm-hmm. two conditions have to be fulfilled for claiming rights. Mm-hmm. But sir, okay. economic status. Okay, we'll see. Sure. We'll see this yes. question again in detail. This is an interesting question. Again, ninth, the question number nine. It is also interesting. Uh, if there is a request for construction of a school in an FRA area, there is an area where you have, as a DFO, you have given forest, and then there is a request that. give us some more land so that we can construct a school for the tribals will you give it in uh, in the recent the question uh, sir yes yes manoj uh, uh, sir there is a provision for general utility area up to 0.1 mm-hmm. acres mm-hmm. uh, if at all there is no school it can be given no sir mm-hmm. okay good and uh, will that be considered as diversion because that is not uh, individual forest rights not even community forest rights it is altogether a, a different case you are just diverting a land so will that diversion be under fca 1980 or fra because any case of diversion has to be dealt with fca and for that you need central government's permission uh, sir according to recent amendment uh, i think uh, that is uh, mm-hmm. exempted sir that is allowed without uh, the uh, the permission of uh, central government up to okay. 0.1 hectares school no yes, school uh, has not been exempted it is just exempted from paying of np net rent value but okay. if you want to construct a school you still get to get that uh, 
uh, exemption from the central government prior approval because what if there is an mla and he wants to construct a school in the name of tribals suppose you have given uh, forest sites in an area Yeah, and uh, there is a local leader, and he wants to construct a private school, a residential private school. So, will that not require prior approval? That would be. Let's see. Okay, I just wanted to prove you guys. Uh, apologies for this thing because this was made on Microsoft. This presentation, and since this is iPad. so the the presentation might look somewhat different than what it was made so these two acts this was done and this was done okay today we will cover this and this okay so the name is basically forest conservation act 1980 it is an act to consolidate uh, the law relating to forest uh, sorry uh, this, this was not changed okay ha huh. ha uh, it is now requested as van sanrakshan evam samvardhan adhiniyam 1980 okay. earlier the name was that and now the name has been changed so this is the difference between the two the recent amendment has brought a few provisions and also changed the name from forest conservation to van sanrakshan evam samvardhan sanrakshan is conservation samvardhan is growth Okay, so the formatting has completely changed, but doesn't matter. No issues. If you are Uh, having any trouble seeing this presentation on this uh, uh, ma'am is sharing uh, this presentation on the group so you can open that on your systems right? otherwise just focus here okay hmm. so forest conservation act first we will see what the original act was and then we will see what has changed okay. because this might again be a stand alone question that what have been uh, the recent amendments in forest conservation act it was a very hot topic since last one or two years and then a group of retired ifs officers they have taken this case to supreme court they have filed a pil and the supreme court has stopped uh, stayed the implementation of this act till a uh, final ruling okay. so the first one the most important this was a very small act the uh, most important section was it was just uh, there were just five sections one page act and the most important was section 2 de reservation or diversion of forest land the difference between de reservation and diversion is de reservation uh, reservation means change in the legal status of a land which is statutorily or otherwise recognized as forest to any other category so in this there is a forest land which is recorded as a forest area in government records and then you change the legal status of the land you give this land to a user agency in this uh, in terms of uh, forest conservation act we will use the term user agency whoever applies for a land for diversion under this act it is termed as a user agency it is defined as user agency so if you change the legal status of a land it is deed reservation and if the there is no change in the legal status it is just that the use rights are given then it is diversion use of any forest land for non forest purpose or assignment of a lease for non forest purpose and then there were two more categories lease and reforestation all these four things need prior approval of central government the need for this act arose in the 1970s and 80s because the states earlier this was a state subject and land being the state subject even after 1976 even after 42nd amendment the states were de-reserving the land the forest land uh, by much okay so every proposal was being approved and then forest was huge swaths of forest land was being diverted so the forest areas were rapidly declining and that is why the central government came with this act especially uh, uh, the then prime minister indira gandhi saying that any de-reservation diversion lease and reforestation 
would need prior approval of the government. Can anyone tell me why reforestation? And for that matter, why lease? Because in the original act, only these two provisions were there. And then the states found another way through the law. The bureaucrats, they found another way. They started giving land on lease. That, okay, we cannot de-reserve, we cannot divert, but we can give it on lease. Then this, this was included through amendment that even for lease, you need prior approval. Then one more thing was being done. If you get this land to divert, you have to give uh, a sum of money for compensatory afforestation. So the compensatory for uh, compensatory afforestation, the user agency has to give a land, an equal amount of land which is being diverted. What the user agency in convenience with the department officials was uh, doing was, they were taking existing forest areas and then doing reforestation in these forest areas. So then fourth provision was uh, included saying that, uh, let me show you, where is it? Yes, consolidated guidelines. That any forest land or any portion thereof may be cleared of trees which have grown naturally in that land or portion for the purpose of using it for reforestation. So you have to do reforestation in new sites. You cannot clear those trees and then again reforest the same area. This was a sort of corruption. And that is why this provision, these two provisions were included later. And what is non-forest purpose? It is clearly defined as cultivation of these. In the earlier act, only this was mentioned. These were not mentioned explicitly. Now these were these are also mentioned and then any other purpose, any purpose other than reforestation. Okay. And then section 3, may, there was an advisory committee to advise the central government regarding uh, this approval under section 2 and section 3A, may, there was a penalty. The penalty is 15 days imprisonment to whoever who contravenes the provisions of this act. Now tell me, there is a forest area and the PWD has passed an order uh, to a contractor and contractor has built a road, but the approval of central government was not taken. Contractor has built a road in the forest area. Who will be punished? The forest department, the PWD or the contractor Who will be punished. Speak up. You, even if the answer is wrong, doesn't matter. Speak up. Any one of you. Uh, hello, sir. It's uh, PWD department. Yes, Nishant. PWD, PWD. Why? Because the user agency has to get the uh, approval from the sector department. But the road has been built by the contractor. Your answer is right. Because Here, notwithstanding anything contained in any other law for the time being in force, no state government or any other authority shall make any order. So whoever has given that order, they are responsible. So even uh, the PWD that has passed the order, the work order to the contractor, the PWD is responsible. No. The contractor will be tried only under IFA, trespass. But the PWD okay. will be tried under FC. Clear? Okay. 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 So this was the original act. Now the important thing, the changes that have been done. Once induction evam samvardhan adhiniyam, uh, the recent amendment, they have added section 1A. Earlier, uh, the land was not mentioned. It was only mentioned that any forest area and this definition, this forest area was not defined. So what happened was Supreme Court in 1996, Goda Varman judgment, it was a very famous judgment. Supreme Court said that forest area means any area that is recorded in uh, government records as forest or 
comes under the dictionary definition of forest now dictionary definition of forest is any area with significant number of trees so even if even your backyard can count uh, can come under forest it depends on the local forest officer if he records it under forest area it if he notifies even if the land is private if he notifies that this is forest area it is forest you cannot cut a single tree you you need to get the permission of the central government for this this happened with uh, 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 senior ifs officer in rajasthan i won't name uh, but uh, uh, the father of the officer before uh, she got selected the father of the officer he had a backyard and he had some trees he had grown a, a mini forest sort of and then when he uh, tried to cut those trees to fell those trees to build a house the forest department refused saying that this is forest this is declared as a forest area you cannot cut this then later uh, he filed a case and then that case went on meanwhile his daughter she cleared and she became a forest officer ifs officer still the ultimately because this was a supreme court ruling he had to get central government approval he had to get a working plan prepared for his forest and then he was allowed to cut only 25% of trees for his own use and this this incentive is is the private forest you would not grow a, a number of trees even if you have a land a waste land or a fallow land because you need to get the permission so that is what, that was the purpose of this amendment and that is why uh, this act was enacted this amendment was enacted to make it easy so it has clearly mentioned that which land will be covered under this act and which land will not be covered under this act so the land that is to be covered is declared or notified as a forest again you can notify any land private bhi ho sakta hai and then the land that is recorded in government records as forest can the irrigation department any records if it is said that it is forest this will come under forest but they have given a few exceptions explicitly and this is to help infrastructure to help national security and two more uh, categories first is the land that is situated alongside a rail line or a public road maintained by the government which provides access to a habitation up to a maximum size of 0.1 hectare so this is this is a very small area but earlier this used to be stuck because you need to get central government permission and the fca process was very very cumbersome so this hindered accessibility to remote areas to tribal hamlets to very very remote areas of chatisgarh jharkhand south east and mp telangana andhra and all okay. so this has been allowed now along the rail line or public road even if you want to expand widen a road the uh, the pwd department the state department or nhai had to get the permission from the central government even if the land is as small as 0.1 hectare secondly this concerns national security so this again has been exempted situated within a distance of 100 kilometers along international borders or loc or lac to be used for construction of strategic linear projects of national importance and concerning national security so this is 100 kilometers this is basically mainly aimed at china some border at pakistan also but on uh, along the pakistan border we have uh, sufficient infra is mainly aimed at china the third category is it is to be you uh, the land that is to be used for construction of security related infrastructure up to 10 hectares whatever security related infrastructure is to be created yeah. anywhere and the last one is to be used for construction of defense related project or camp for paramilitary in lw areas up to 5 hectares fine so these are the four categories that are exempted they don't need prior approval from the central government so the process becomes easier and there was there were huge uh, controversy over this also because uh, the petitioners the IF, uh, the group of ifs officers uh, the case is ashok kumar versus union of india so they argued that the strategic projects concerning national security they are anyway not rejected no officer rejects them so why to uh, completely exempt them at the same time the government's logic was if it is never rejected what is the problem if we include it explicitly it is it was anyway getting approval so what is the problem it will still get approval but if it is exempted this process will be fast tracked 
we need infra and that too very quickly on the chinese border so it is to fast track this project so this is not uh, uh, this provision is not of too much concern yeah. other provisions which we will discuss shortly they are of much more concern than these provisions okay. again section 2 same de reservation diversion lease and reforestation they need prior approval of central government hmm. so uh, here again in this section it is mentioned that to use forest for non forestry purposes in this diversion for non forestry purposes and that non forest is defined as any uh, those five to six cultivations and any uh, purpose other than reforestation but there are some exceptions so these would not be considered as non forestry purposes basically they are forestry purposes so earlier also you could do this but you had to even the forest officers they had to get approval if you want to construct a staff quarter uh, a forest guard he lives in inside the forest and it is best for the forest that he lives inside the forest so if you want to construct a house for him you, you need to get uh, permission but now it is explicitly mentioned here silvicultural operations if you want to cut trees or change the silvicultural system to other change from clear felling to shelter wood to selection and all you don't need to get permission to uh, establish check post and infrastructure for front line forest staff establishment and maintenance of fire lines wireless communication boundary pillars bridges culverts all these activities are ancillary to forest conservation and that is why they have been exempted dams water holes trenches pipelines and establishment of zoos and safaris owned by the government or an authority in forest areas other than protected areas so if you want to establish zoo and safaris yeah, then also you don't need permission and this was one such provision which was controversial and the last and is eco tourism facilities again this also so these two provisions were controversial because what happens is at times uh, when you are uh, when you will be in the field the dfos they are uh, they are being pressured by the local representatives if there is uh, uh, an amount of man animal conflict conflict in your area what the local mla would pressurize you is construct a zoo a rescue center or a zoo so that you can capture those animals and keep them in the zoo plus open it for public so that you will get revenue also and the public representative he will get a name that i have constru uh, constructed so and so uh, zoo so and so facility in my district even if there is not not uh, there are not any uh, visitors even if that project is not viable he might pressurize you okay so and then safari also this is even more controversial because ecotourism is not defined you can include anything in ecotourism even uh, adventure activities like uh, rappelling and all inside a forest area it is tourism that is in sync with ecology or environment so there is no proper definition but uh, they have done the bare minimum uh, during this amendment and it is only those ecotourism facilities Uh, are exempted which are included in the working plan of that division or management plan of that protected area or tiger conservation plan of the tiger reserve if it is reserved forest working plan if it is protected area management plan if it is uh, tiger reserve it is tiger conservation plan so these two provisions have been challenged in that petition also section 3a again the penalty is same 15 days imprisonment to uh, the uh, the authority that passes the order or the government servant where whose watch the diversion has happened without prior approval again this act still is not too comprehensive earlier it was one page now after inclusion of two three sections uh, it is of two pages the devil is in the detail the rules one sanjakshan and sambandha rules earlier it was fca rules 2003 now since the act has been changed comprehensively the government has come out with new rules and in those rules there are a few things the first one is of course definitions and in definitions three things are important one is accredited compensatory afforestation 
second is working permission and the third one we'll see uh, afterwards i'll show you here the rules there is the act there is the end just two pages these are the rules can you see this i'll take it as a yes okay so these are the definitions this is a new thing that has been introduced we'll see this in detail uh, uh, while we discuss uh, these rules or yeah. now just un understand that it is a system of proactive afforestation we'll uh, understand this only if we understand this compensatory afforestation then only we will be able to understand accredited compensatory afforestation again the other definitions are general there are compensatory levies there are type of levies that has to have to be uh, deposited by the user agency the reservation and diversion are defined here there is a new committee that has come up and i will see the process of uh, diversion of the land so that that will give you some clarity if they ask any question you will have some clarity who does this what does the dfo do what does the state forest department do if you need to get prior approval of the central government whose approval do you really need is it the forest minister is it the prime minister is it who, who is moefcc or ministry of tribal affairs whatever it is user agency is defined working permission this definition is important it means permission is granted to linear projects before final approval to mobilize the resources to commence a preliminary project work other than black topping concretization laying of railway track so it is basically for linear projects and they need to procure uh, things and start preliminary work survey and all before they can start the main work so this uh, permission takes huge amount of time and this approval comes in two stages stage 1 and stage 2 this is in principle approval and this is final approval so pending final approval if you have got a in principle approval then you can be given a working permission so that you can commence the preliminary project work you cannot do this but you can do this so this was a definition which can be directly asked other than that okay uh, this is advisory committee again it is the same as that of the previous act two different committees have come up advisory committee mein there is uh, uh, the dgf uh, they are basically to advise the central government on matters of deal reservation of forest and the second one is regional empowered committee this is on the, in the regional offices okay so when we say the approval of central government when we say mo moefcc it is not possible for moefcc to monitor all the forest all the forests of all the states and to give approvals so moefcc has created a number of regional offices that cover multiple states so there is a regional office at bhopal there is a regional office at jaipur there is a regional office at bangalore like these there are regional offices and they cover multiple states like bangalore one it might cover bangalore telangana or something like that there are around 16 regional offices and you have to get permission get approval from the, uh, those regional offices earlier it used to go to regional offices and advisory committee only used to advise now some provisions would go to regional empowered committee that has been established at regional office and some uh, proposals would go to advisory committee but the most important is the project screening committee this has been created now there is there would be a nodal officer in the state he would be the chairperson then concerned ccf dfo district collector and dfo would be the member secretary this project screening committee shall meet twice every month and this or every proposal would be submitted first to this project committee except those proposals which are less than 5 hectares except proposals involving forest land of 5 hectares or less if it is 5 hectares it directly goes to the dfo the dfo the concerned dfo the concerned dfo himself can uh, examine the proposal and recommend it more than 5 hectares it goes to the project screening committee so we will not go into too much details of the process we will just see it project screening committee the composition is you don't have to remember it it is just for your knowledge that who all are included there who takes the decision okay approval process 
Okay. In this iPad, I had made a flow chart, but that uh, that seems to have been evaporated. Uh, if you can see in that uh, uh, group, uh, that uh, PPT that has been shared in the group. Otherwise, I'll make it here. So. Uh, the project, uh, when a user agency requires land, it first submits the project to the project screening committee. First, it goes to the PSC. Let's take this. User agency. Then it goes to the project screening committee. The screening committee examines the project and sees that all documents are in order, all the, all the, uh, these, uh, documents, all the attachments, all the forms, they are properly attached. And then they will send this to the concerned DFO for field infection. The DFO will conduct the field inspection and make a report saying that this uh, along with his recommendation, like what are the impacts of the project? So here DFO becomes very powerful as a DFO. If you think that this project is not uh, the cost of this project are much more than the benefits the cost outweigh you can outrightly recommend that this project should not be approved because it is a habitat of a rare and endangered species that is not found anywhere else if you write this line nobody can give this uh, give the approval nobody would this yeah. if it is a if you do a proper field survey yeah, and if you recommend then nobody would if it is true, nobody will challenge that. There could be a field inspection by the CCF and all to verify the facts, but otherwise, your word would be taken on face value. Okay. Then from DFO, it goes to the nodal officer. Pardon my handwriting. It goes to the nodal officer uh, and the PCCF, the highest. Uh, ranking IFS officer in the state who forwards it to the state government and then it goes to the central government. At this stage, the state government can also determine if it wants to give in principle approval or not. If it decides no, it is communicated to the user agency and the project dies. If it decides that yes, it has to be recommended, it give, goes to the central government. So this is the basic process of uh, approvals under FCA. Again, there are four or five categories. You don't need to go into that much detail. So if these are the projects, for these projects, the proposal will go to regional office and the regional empowered committee will take a decision. For these projects, and even this project, it will go to the central government and the Advisory committee will take a decision. So that is why I told you three committees. Advisory committee, regional committee. So for a few important projects, it goes to the central government and this highest committee takes a decision for some lesser degree. It goes to regional offices and regional empowered committee. Both are under central government only. Both are under MOFCC. And this is the initial committee from where it starts. Okay. Now we come to compensatory afforestation. So every user agency that applies for a land under FCA, it shall provide non forest land equivalent to the land that it is asking for. So if it is asking for 100 hectares of land, it should provide 100 hectares of non forest land. And it shall also bear the cost of raising compensatory afforestation over such land. So land plus the value. In case the non forest land is not fit for raising or it is not available, it is not fit for raising compensatory afforestation, then it has to provide a degraded forest land 
if there is no non forest land in the district or nearby or the agency says that i have got this land but it is no you determine the dfo determines that it is not fit for raising compensatory forest land it has to give twice the degraded forest land and again bear the cost of raising compensatory afforestation over such land specified density for raising compensate uh, okay and this twice degraded forest land should not be under management control of the forest department they may be encroached lands they may be some land which is uh, recorded as a revenue land but notified as a forest it is not recorded as a revenue uh, forest land in revenue records it is under the position of revenue but it is said that there are some trees so it is a forest private forest whatever it is degraded forest land it should be and what is the uh, aim of compensatory afforestation it aims to raise plantation develop a forest of minimum canopy density of 0.4 or more in the fifth year so in the fifth year it should reach this canopy level and this user agency shall bear the cost for raising this afforestation in 10 years and in fifth year it should reach this and is it uh, it is the duty of the local forest department the dfo to certify that this is happening otherwise the uh, approval can be revoked the fca diversion it can be revoked secondly management of compensatory afforestation once the user agency it gives this land and this money it can the management overall management control is with forest department the forest department in the plan itself the initial compensatory plan itself i can say that whatever is this decided by the forest say we will raise the plantation they can ask the user agency to raise the plantation and then transfer it to the department whatever is decided by them that is the case secondly the state government this is a new provision the state government may create a land bank under the administrative control of forest department for the purpose of compensatory afforestation the government might identify waste uh, land example in rajasthan uh, the total forest area around 32000 hectare uh, hectares recorded forest area and there is uh, uh, waste lands Uh, there are waste lands in Rajasthan. There are around thirty-eight thousand hectares. So twice, uh, almost one point two times area forest is available as waste lands. So the government can create a land bank, which can be given for compensatory afforestation. The state governments, because most of the land is uh, in, uh, applied for, most of the diverted land goes to state government only. Whether it be their uh, electricity utility or pipelines or roads, PWD, whatever it is, private agencies get very less. Okay. now comes accredited compensatory afforestation so the user agency has to raise compensatory afforestation plantation but there are some uh, cases where uh, companies have proactively raised plantations like for example there is a coal mine coal project coal india limited it has a coal mine and the mine has been exhausted the mine's life is over so what they do is they reclaim the mine they fill it again the overburden that was affected and kept on the dust it is filled again and it is leveled and then plantation is raised over this now this plantation can be cared for and then this plantation so they can get these credits and then this can be used to further get land diverted for mining so tomorrow they might need this is the land that ha they have developed uh, for plantation they might need this land they have found a, a coal in this area now they this is a forest area and they need this area to be diverted from forest so instead of developing a new plantation they can say that we have already developed this consider this and they we have obtained acas for this accredited compensatory afforestation it is like uh, those uh, psl certificates by banks private sector lending it is a similar uh, a similar mechanism to that okay it can be swapped for compensatory afforestation proposed under rule 13 
Also, this ACA is accredited comp compensatory afforestation. Can uh, they are eligible for allocation of green credits? Also, the government, if you are aware, the government has come out with green credit policy, and the the rules have been uh, uh, enacted in December last year, and you can get green credits. All the uh, private agencies, the industries, the institutions, yeah, any entity, even the individuals, they can earn green credits for acts which are specified in these rules for acts which are beneficial to the environment. They can earn some green credits like planting trees or some waste recycling, all these things. You can earn these green credits. So even those agencies which are raising these plantations, they can also get green credits. So it is a win-win, a double win for the agencies. This again is to encourage uh, proactive plantations, proactive reforestation efforts. This is a new provision and this again raised much hue and cry among the activists. They are saying that ex post facto approval will be given with penalty in very selected cases. This is a new provision which was enacted, which was inserted through the recent amendment. But this is a very uh, this was considered as a dangerous provision by environmental activists. Earlier, all the cases where prior approval has not been taken under section 2 they were considered as violation of FCA and they were proceeded against. Action was taken against all those officials as well as the user agencies. But now all those agencies which have not taken approval, they can take approval through this route and save, be saved from 15 days imprisonment by just paying some penalty. Although uh, the government's defense is that not all proposals are given this approval very very selected projects are getting this approval there was a university in haryana that became the first one to go uh, to get this approval so very very uh, selective projects and only those which have legitimate reason as to why approval was not taken and another controversial provision was this zoo rescue center rehabilitation center and captive breeding facility earlier to establish these you had to get permission to divert forest area to establish these facilities. You had to divert forest area. Now you do not have to divert forest area. So you can construct as many zoos as you want, even if there are no visitors, even if there is no requirement, the forest land can be diverted just because of the pressure of a few people. A few clarifications, which are uh, FAQs. The, uh, the first one and the most important is, is FCA applicable on private lands? Because after the Goda government judgment, it became applicable on private lands. Yeah. Is it still applicable? It clearly says that the provisions of act are not applicable on the tree plantation afforestation raised on private lands, except the notified private forest. So only those areas which are notified as forest areas, it is applicable only on those. Otherwise, you are free to manage your own forest. However, the felling of trees again in these private plantations shall be governed by various state acts, rules, regulations, and as per the working plans. And which are those state acts? It is tree acts. Many states have enacted these tree acts. For example, in Delhi, there is a Delhi Tree Preservation Act. Rajasthan also has such act. MP also has, Maharashtra also has Tree Preservation Act. So even if it is in your house or in a private land to cut a tree, we need to get the permission of the forest department to cut that tree. Okay. So this will still be applicable, but if it is, an, it is not notified as a private forest, your own farmlands, your own backyards, your farmhouses, whatever it is, it is not applicable on this. This is again to encourage people to plant trees because we have an INDC to create 2.3 to 3 billion tons, 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon sink. And the government alone cannot do this. Okay. Secondly, any diversion of forest land for non forest purpose is only a right to use. Any diversion is only a right to use granted to user agency without any change in the ownership and legal status. As such, the diverted forest land cannot be mortgaged. If you think that you have got, you, you are a, a, a contractor or a company and you have got a land 
and then you don't have money to develop that project for the pro, uh, for which you have got that land so you think that i have got this land now i can mortgage it to bank get some money and then start my project no you have got only use rights no title rights it cannot be reassigned or subleased also if you want to transfer it the other agency it has to get this approval under fc again from the central government and last one and it is very important they might ask you that you get a proposal of construction of a hospital Uh, diversion of uh, a forest land for construction of a hospital would you consider it if the project is non site specific like there is a transmission line this transmission line is site specific because to connect this village to this village or there is is a road this is site specific to connect this village to this village if this is the forest area you have no other option Okay. If this is this is very very far, this is vast forest area. You have to go th- go through this. This is a site specific, but a school or a college for that matter, it is not site specific. Okay. Except for a very few cases, it is not site specific. I'll show you the extant provision. Site specific. Diversion of forest land for non-site specific utilization of forest area for establishing industries, construction of residential colonies, institutes, rehabilitation of displaced persons, etc., are non-site specific activities and cannot be considered on forest land as a rule. As a rule, they will be rejected. The DA, the DFO would reject, the forest department would reject. If they don't, the central government would reject. No non-site specific proposal can be entertained for considering approval. in exceptional circumstances residential projects up to 1 hectare can be considered for approval under this act subject to appropriate justification so only as an exception not as a rule so non site specific project so you can get a question in the interview that there is a proposal for a township would you approve it there is a proposal for an institute proposal for an industry if that industry is not site specific the raw material it is procuring from some somewhere else there is an electronic industry and they are asking for forest land you can straight away refuse go and purchase some private land acquire a private land or a revenue land forest and land is not to be diverted for non site specific activities and then this is one such question which is sometimes asked what is npv what is the rate of npv and where does this money go so all the money from compensatory afforestation is to be deposited into state or ut specific campa accounts which are managed by the national authority national authority is campa it is under the campa act compensatory afforestation act 2016 it is mentioned there and second and most important is npv and this was mandated by the supreme court in this red petition this is godavarman the judgment came on 20 uh, 2002 in addition to the funds realized for compensatory afforestation for raising that plantation you also have to give the value the compensation for net present value of the forest this is for a forest land you have given equivalent land for this you have given trees are cut so you have given money for compensatory afforestation but this land has a present value also so you have to give that value also and that is called as net present value because it is not just trees it is a complete ecosystem okay so you have to give this in addition to compensatory afforestation forest land diverted for non forest purposes is also to be recovered from user agencies for undertaking forest protection other conservation measures and related activities this money is used to take take up these activities and this npv is fixed by moefcc based on the eco class of the forest i will show you the rates of npvs also and in case of national park this npv is 10 times and in case of sanctuaries this is 5 times the npv 
Now see the NPVs. This is the NPVs. This is based on the eco class of the forest. Are you all with me? This completely stopped. Are you able to follow? Yes, sir. Any yes, one sir. of you? Okay, okay. This is the NPV. For a very dense forest, it is 15 crores, 95. Uh, Fifteen lakhs ninety-five thousand seven ninety per hectare. So if it is hundred hectares, it would be fifteen crores for a hundred hectare land. If it is an eco class one or very dense and very dense forest, very dense, dense and open. You already know more than 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 2 point seven and 0 0.4. If this is the canopy density, this is how you classify these. These are degrees that are exempted from NPVs. You don't need to remember this. Just get a, a basic idea of what is NPV, how is it paid, how it is de decided, and what is exempt. So that your answer becomes substantive. When you say, you say it with conviction, whatever you say there. So this is some adenium as well as the rules. This is the Raipur Vizag Expressway passing through a lush green forest. If you are having a heartache seeing this, you're already a forester. Now let's go to the Forest Rights Act. Any doubts uh, with respect to uh, the FCA? First, we'll take up the doubts and then we'll take up uh, the next topic. Yes, Prashant. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, it is mandatory to ah, de reserve the yes, sir. Is it mandatory to de reserve hmm. the land before the diversion? To de reserve the land before diversion? No. No. Generally the land is diverted only. The title is not given only in exceptional circumstances. It is de reserved. Because de reservation is you are changing the status. It will not anymore remain a forest land. In okay. diversion, it is only that you are giving user rights. They will use once the life of the project is over, that land might come back to the forest department. Okay. okay. So and one these, more these are two different things. Yes. The land that uh, the user agency gave in return of the forest land. Mm -hmm. So uh, the ownership right of that land remain with the forest department or the user yes, agency? Yes, definitely. Agency? That land has so many conditions. Firstly, it should be free from encroachments. Then it should be fit to raise a plantation. And then that land has to be mutated in favor of the forest department. Whatever the ownership of that land is, it has to be converted. It has to be uh, mutated in favor of forest department. The title rights have to be given. Then only the final approval would be given. I told you there are two approvals. In principle approval, stage one and stage two. All this happens through, uh, I forgot to tell you, all this happens through Parivesh portal. It is an online portal, so it is all transparent. If the user agency applies on Parivesh portal, it goes to the concerned DFO and project screening committee. And then through that Parivesh portal only, it goes to the central government. And then in principle approval is granted. After that in principle approval, the user agency is asked, the DFO is asked to calculate this NPV and all these things. And then that is communicated to the user agency. The user agency has to deposit all the compensatory levies and submit this land, deposit this land also in favor of forest department, transfer the ownership, and then only final approval is given. Then only they can start the work. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. And one more question is, uh, do we have any say of the local community in this diversion of land as per the FCA? Only if there are uh, the rights involved. 
their rights they, those rights are to be settled if there are traditional rights those rights are to be settled one more area where uh, it is uh, uh, the local community has a say is uh, when you uh, when user agency gives compensatory uh, land uh, the land for compensatory yeah. afforestation they can also give a land which is under forest area but it was encroached or there was a village which was not relocated if they give that relocated land they convince the local villagers to relocate and give that land they will give some, get some exemption in npv also because it is very difficult to relocate people from protected areas okay. yes sandeep sandeep you can Thanks. speak uh, your doubt in call messages let me see up to 4 hectares yes uh, that is up to 4 hectares is acha you were answering that question no need of it. see how to calculate npv i told you that table it is per hectare you just see the eco class of the land and multiply it by the the amount of land that is required that is npv you don't have to do it moefcc does that it is fixed by moefcc the state the reserves a reserved forest do they need to pay compensation and equal area of land yes any user agency that does this state does not do this the agencies of state do this pwd or the electricity department whatever department they need to pay compensation and equal area of land to the forest department any agency does npv include both ecosystem value and land value it basically includes ecosystem value only because for land you are getting uh, land in exchange of land okay next question thank you vandra i think the questions are over so let's move uh, the fire to undo the historical injustices the acts preamble says that it was enacted to undo the historical injustices to the uh, for scheduled tribes as well as the for dwellers the important provision here again section 2 is definitions so some some of the most important definitions are community forest resource what is a community forest resource they can ask you the discussion directly what is a what do, what do you mean by community forest resource it is basically customary common forest land within the traditional or customary boundaries of the village or seasonal use of landscape in case of pastoral communities leave this leave this including reserved forest protected forest and protected area such as sanctuaries and national parks so many a times i get this question sir can fra be given in protected areas yes if the communities had a traditional access in these areas fra also applies to these areas community forest resource are also located in sanctuaries and national parks and mind you yesterday wildlife protection act said that rights and concessions cannot be enjoyed in national parks yeah. but this act overrides all other acts we'll see how second is critical wildlife habitat yesterday we saw critical tiger habitat cth it was nothing but another name of the technical name of core area of a tiger reserve core and buffer so the another name for core critical tiger habitat that is different from this critical wildlife habitat critical wildlife habitat is defined under this act and it means such areas of national parks and sanctuaries where it has been specifically and clearly established case by case on the basis of scientific and objective criteria that such areas are required to be kept as inviolate for the purposes of wildlife conservation then those areas can be kept as inviolate and we'll see the exact provision related to critical wildlife habitat so here again the concerns of environmentalist and uh, wildlifers they were taken into consideration that there are some areas which need to be kept inviolate yeah. so what what should be uh, what should uh, be the case what should be the status of rights in these areas we'll see again there are two definitions i told you about the mla we'll see the mla mla wala case study here first is forest dwellings scheduled tribes 
the members or community of the scheduled tribes who primarily reside in and who depend on forest or forest lands for bona fide livelihood need so even if you are a scheduled tribe and you are residing in a forest you should also be dependent on the forest for bona fide livelihood needs if you are an mla you are not dependent on forest for livelihoods so you can very well refuse to give the title the individual land rights okay. there are three conditions scheduled tribes residing in and dependents same similar is the case here this is only for scheduled tribes scheduled tribes even if they reside in there is no time criteria that for this many years these generations no scheduled tribes just have to reside have to be residing in the forest and dependent on the forest the other traditional forest dwellers any member or community who has for at least three generations because there were these were the original inhabitants of the forest these communities came from outside but you cannot straight away evict them from forest what if these people have been living there for more than three generations now they are almost equivalent to these they are dependent on forest okay so that is why they were also included and till this date three generations prior to this date this was the date of enactment of this act and that is why because otherwise somebody will come after this date and say that i was also residing there so there should be a this this date of cut off and finally depend on forest for bona fide livelihood needs so if you are asked in an interview asked a question on fra that would you give uh, permission or would you give title rights you know when to say yes and when to say no all right then section 3 this is the main section of this act this says that forest rights can be given for uh, the uh, these types of rights can be given under this act one is right to hold and live in the forest land under the individual or common occupation you can live individually or you can live with your family you can live there that uh, uh, right can be given for habitation and also for self cultivation so this question uh is another frequent question people ask sir can we get the land and do agriculture can anyone do agriculture there yes this is for self cultivation for livelihood second is the community rights such as nistar these are the pasture lands the uh, the ponds you get the lakes from where they draw water these type of rights the nistar the traditional community rights third is the right of ownership access to collect use and dispose of minor forest produce if they are getting they have been uh, enjoying this right traditionally then they can get this right also fourth is rights to protect regenerate or conserve or manage any community forest resource any sacred groves or whatever community forest resources there they have the right to protect regenerate conserve or manage also then right of access to biodiversity and community right to intellectual property and traditional knowledge and lastly right to in situ rehabilitation if they were illegally evicted earlier yeah so even if they were illegally evicted earlier in 1970s 80s 90s whatever it is once they come and claim their right they have the right to be rehabilitated in that forest only if they were illegally evicted fine this is the question that i was asking about the school that you have given Uh, let me show you this forest rights act schemes and guidelines this is the act these are the definitions these are the types of rights forest rights of forest dwelling uh, sts and otfds section 32 notwithstanding anything contained in the fca the central government shall provide for diversion of forest land see shall provide for diversion of forest land 
for the following facilities managed by the government again this is also important which involve felling of trees not exceeding 75 trees per hectare namely these things so if you have given fra land pattas in an area there is a village this is your forest area and this is a village and you have given forest rights area uh, forest rights lands here okay. so if they ask you sir please give us some land to construct a school you can give it provided there are two conditions the land should be less than 1 hectare and then it should be recommended by gram sabha thirdly there should be the number of trees that have to be felled should not be more than 75 per hectare and fourth for only these purposes these are the four things and remember the term used here is diversion so we the forest is diverted only under this act only this kind of diversion is done under this act so the diversion of forest land happens under two acts this is not a very well known fact yeah, but this is the main act for forest diversion but there is a provision of diversion in fra also okay. and this includes schools dispensary anganwadi fair price shop electric and telecommunication lines tanks drinking water supply rain harvesting irrigation non conventional sources skill upgradation roads and community centers fine these are the four conditions three and fourth one is 1 uh, 2 3 and 4 hmm. again this is a uh, uh, this is another important provision and this relates to critical wildlife habitats so this act provides that forest rights recognized under this act in critical wildlife habitats and i have already told you the definition of critical wildlife habitat what are critical habitat wildlife habitats so if the government has decided that uh, government is of the view that these areas some areas of these need to be kept inviolate for the purpose of the wildlife okay. then the forest rights which are recognized in these areas may subsequently be modified or resettled so you can resettle them but there are four conditions you have to give them rights the tribals but you can modify them or resettle them provided four conditions what are those four conditions first is presence of holders of rights upon wild animals is sufficient to cause irreversible damage and threaten the existence of said species and their habitats this you have to certify that if people are present there it would cause irreversible damage and threaten the existence existence are not available that simply cannot coexist there have been numerous cases of man animal conflict and you have to relocate them i told you in the last last session that there is there is a peculiar case in bandavgarh where uh, the whole village has relocated except one elderly gentleman and he is living there alone so in such cases where you have no other option of coexistence that person cannot live there properly others cannot uh, even the animals are threatened by their uh, presence then you can modify or resettle these rights but only after free informed consent of gram sabha and resettlement or alternative package which is which is acceptable to them these are very handsome packages you will get to know once you get into the service you will get to know good packages are given to uh, uh, the people who are willing to relocate so as to create contiguous areas for the preservation of wildlife and forest then section 6 describes the procedure of how these rights are granted so first many of you would be knowing this procedure first gram sabha is the authority to initiate a process they pass a resolution to that effect and then forward the copy of the same to sdlc if you have a grievance you can apply to the sdlc then sdlc again it forwards this provision it takes a decision and forwards to this committee for final this it can reject also or it can forward this to final uh, for final decision to uh, district level committee with its rejection recommendation it has to go to dlc the decision of dlc is final and binding you can challenge this only in a court of law 
finally there is a penalty that is 1000 rupees something like that no jail term this was about forest rights act so it's a simple act you just need to be aware of the provisions what are the rights the types of rights that can be granted the community rights and all and the diversion of forest land for this community and the provision regarding critical wildlife habitat this is a conflict which is as most the rights of the people versus the rights of the environment or the forest which would you preserve so this act gives you the to uh, to solve that dilemma so you already have provision so whenever you instead of saying that generic answer to this question generic answer to this question of conservation versus development now you have n number of provisions where you can make your answer more substantive and so that is all on forest rights act is open for uh before that uh, the last session was recorded fortunately uh, and it is available on uh, youtube yeah. i don't know uh, about uh, the quality of audio it was fine i was told yeah. so if you want to refer it those who had not referred it last time or those who want to go through it again in their free time they can go through it according to their own speed 1x 1.5x 2x okay any questions If you are shy of asking questions here, you can text me your questions directly also. I'll try to reply uh, to them as soon as possible. Welcome, Priya. Unfortunately, the session has ended. yes you can switch on your cameras now i'll be sharing this ppt no issues no issues i was just joking priya role of dfo in granting these rights yes so the dfo is the member secretary of the uh, district level committees there are three committees one is the uh, gram sabha then there is sub divisional level committee and then there is district level committee so in the gram sabha the forest guard he will be uh, uh, invited yeah, he will be consulted uh, regarding the status of the land regarding the claims then in the sub divisional level committee there is a representation of uh, the subordinate forest staff like the ranger and uh, the sdo and finally the dfo is the member secretary of the district uh, division uh, district level committee the chairman is the collector of course because this is a case between the forest department and the tribal people so forest department cannot be given the sole authority or else uh, they might refuse all the cases they won't but uh, this was the understanding at the government level so the uh, collector is the chairman but dfo is the member secretary so if the dfo does not agree to a proposal even if all the others mem members agree he can give a dissent note and in all probabilities that proposal would not see the light of the day secondly uh, the diversion of land for school and anganwadi and all uh, up to 1 hectare that again is done by the dfo only that power has been given to dfo he has the sole power to divert that land it of course goes to the central government but dfo does that any more questions yes yes prasuk yes yes but there is a perception that uh, forest department is a big hindrance in in the recognition of forest rights so mm -hmm. what are the ground realities mm -hmm. good uh, it's a very good question and it is frequently asked in interviews it is there is a constant tussle 
between the people and the forest department what you need to understand is there are claims which are genuine and there are claims which are not genuine land is a very valuable com- uh, commodity it is very very valuable and very few lands are available with the revenue departments now even with the other departments yeah and you you know the prices of real estates so even if you get 1 hectare land it is very valuable and there are organized encroachment yeah, gangs i would say or groups which encourage encroachment saying that you just encroach and then we will apply we will file a claim under fra yeah, and then that land would later be regularized so forest department has to be vigilant so that only the genuine claimants get that if you if the forest department accepts every proposal the genuine claimants would be left behind and the land mafia they would get the land okay so we have to be very thorough with the scrutiny of these proposals we cannot say yes to all the proposals we have to examine each and every proposal if it is right if it is legitimate and then only we can give approval and there are enough safeguards if you read this forest rights act thoroughly it is heavily tilted in the favor of scheduled tribes because it recognizes that at times the forest uh, the scheduled tribes the tribal people they might not have revenue records earlier three generations back there there might not be revenue records in forest they were not revenue villages yeah, the people used to live in forest and sometimes in some tribal communities the rights passed passed orally yeah, they don't have documentations so even if you give you get a testimony from the gram sabha that is also accepted okay. you don't need to present the land patta rights only okay. there is no uh, hard and fast and there is no uh, rigid condition in this uh, let me share this again and show you how liberal this act is just a second i have to start broadcast one second <clears throat> this was the act now these are the rules see the rules here identification of hamlets in gram sabha functions of gram sabha functions of sdlc everything is given in detail there is no scope of arbitrariness on the part of forest department forest department cannot take decisions arbitrarily even in the district level committee forest department is not the only one the forest officers are not the sole authorities state level monitoring committee also is headed by chief secretary and there are many other officers also okay. so they monitor the implementation of this act and i'll tell you procedure hmm. at least two of the evidence is mentioned in rule 13 now see the rule 13 what evidence they have to give public documents if they have some document by whatever name called patta lease report of committees whatever it is government authorized document voter id card whatever it is physical attributes such as house hurts permanent improvements made to land even if they have a house there this again is one of the evidences then judicial and quasi judicial records court orders judgments research studies documentation of customs and traditions if your customs are documented by some anthropology professor or some researcher even that having the force of customary law by reputed institutions like ansi any record including any map of survey of india records of rights privileges wherever it is written traditional structures like wells burials genealogy tracing ancestry to individual statement of elders see this reduced in writing even this is accepted as a evidence so it is heavily tilted in favor of tribals okay so forest department even if they want cannot act in an arbitrary manner and they don't act in an arbitrary manner it is our mandate is to uh, conserve the forest department a forest uh, land also so we cannot go around saying yes to every proposal okay i hope i'm clear yes. so 
Yes, thank thank you, sir. Okay. 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 Uh, sir, I have one question. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, Manoj. So this is regarding Karnataka's uh, rejection rate, mm. sir. Sir, as far as uh, Patna rejection rate is concerned, sir, mm. we have close, more than eighty percent of the applicants mm. uh, are uh, uh, being rejected. Mm. So what can be the possible reason, sir? Mm -hmm. uh, there are multiple reasons. Uh, the uh, uh, one reason I told you is there are fake claims also. There are land mafias that are trying to grab land in in the garb of uh, being tribals. I told you about that MLA. That was a real story. One of the MLAs he applied for four hectare land. Imagine four hectare land. That MLA applied. He might not have a scarcity of land, but he applied for four hectares land under FRA, saying that I am tribal and living in the forest in the vicinity of forest. So one is that reason. Second reason is I told you these evidences are accepted. But many of the forest communities, like Soligas and all those, they are extremely, extremely backward. They don't even know these provisions. Yeah. They they are not told about these provisions. Sometimes they are not told about their rights. Yeah. So they they come and then uh, they apply something and they don't. The documentation is not proper. Uh, proper. They have to submit two evidences and some things, some some forms. There are three four forms. In that uh, PDF I showed you, there are three, four forms at the end. So sometimes the documentation is not proper. That is why it is uh, rejected. And uh, if the rejection, if the acceptance rate is high, that does not mean that state is performing well. Okay. Like uh, uh, Rajasthan. Rajasthan made the acceptance rate is around 50%. Okay. But only around 1.5% of the population in Rajasthan, the percentage of ST population is uh, around 12 to 15 percent, I guess, if I'm not wrong, there's around 12 to 15 percent. But the people who have applied is only around one to two percent. It is basically around uh, if we take uh, modest estimates, it is 10 percent of the tribals have applied. Yeah, so they, they are not even aware of. Okay. Contrary to that, Karnataka may if it is 20 percent, the awareness might be more. So every one of the tribals might have applied. The tribal population is a huge part, a huge chunk. And everyone might have applied saying that I am a tribal, so I might get a land. But the condition is you should be a tribal and you should be residing in the forest and dependent on that forest for livelihoods. Three conditions. So if I am in a scheduled tribe living anywhere close to the forest, not in the forest, outside the forest, but very close, I might Take, uh, take chances. I might apply for uh, this land, saying that if I get four hectares, maje, maje. Yeah. so this might also be the case. So there are multitude of factors. This does not mean that if the rejection is high, then the forest department is at fault. The uh, scrutiny might be very good. Or the uh, forest department can also be, uh, might also be rejecting some cases based on frivolous uh, excuses. Yeah. So both sides, we have we have to see both sides. We have to see what kind of scrutiny is being done. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? I wanted to show you one more file. I think that file has been shared. Uh, uh, on that group, those who have not received that file, there are some situational questions in that file. Yes, those of you who are not added to that group, uh, I will be adding you uh, to that group. You will be added. You can get whatever material I've shared. I have one file which I am still in process of compiling. 
I had made a few interview notes that will give you some idea about how to make notes from your DAF, how to prepare your DAF. This was this file. Uh, let me share the screen. There are a few situational questions. Most of you might have seen this file. I had shared it earlier. I prepared these questions from the IFS transcripts of that year. Yes, this one. So whatever they were asking, what is a forest? You understand by forest cover and forest area. So forest can have three definitions. Then they can be classified. This was from the uh, hotel notes that I referred conservation reserves and community reserves. Then some questions about nursery. So what are the activities that are taken up in nursery? What is the layout of a nursery? These were questions that we studied for means also. This was the calculation. Then what is what do you mean by high-tech nursery? Poly greenhouse, agri-net. What do you mean by agroforestry? Since I was from Rajasthan, so I prepared some popular models of agroforestry. This is multi-purpose trees and shrubs and farmlands, acacia nilotica and all protein banks, wind breaks, yeah. which is the best model of agroforestry in Rajasthan, which is the worst model, something like this. What is social forestry, the scope, objectives, etc. Are you able to see the screen, this PDF? Yes, sir. Anyone of you? Yes, sir. OK, OK. Um, what are the social what is joint forest and this again is a is a very confusing uh, topic on which it is you you only get generalized content on this the joint forest management is and most of the aspirants give generalized answers to this the joint forest management is and uh, an approach where both come together and manage forests but it is somewhat more than that what is the structure there are forest protection committees that are created under this how the does that happen? So a basic idea you would get. How the benefits are shared. Where do the funds go? Then role of forest officers in JFM. What is the role of RFO in JFM? Yeah. The RFO is the one who forms the JFMC, Joint Forest Management Committee, and in inspects. What is the role of the ACF? It reviews, uh, it reviews the activities of JFMC. And DFO, this AFMC is registered by the DFO. So RFO forms the JFMC and gets it registered by the DFO. Make an agreement, take action against JFMC. Then challenges, some of them I, due to paucity of time, I could not complete. Some best practices I have written, but not completely. This is. There is one entity known as Forest Development Agency. What is that? Forest Acts leave this, whatever I have taught, leave these. These are some important provisions, but after that, some amendments have been done. It was a bill then, now it is an act. This is completely changed. So leave these acts. Policies, you can see, compare the three policies. They can ask you compare the 88 policy with 52 or the uh, draft national forest policy 2018. You can find these at one place in these notes. Dams in forest, kind of types of dams. Smaller dams, they are beneficial, but larger dams invariably lead to diversion. So for forest, they are not good, but they are essential for the larger public good. Tribals and their uh, status in the forest, their schemes, challenges, FRA, and women in forest areas, Project Bold by KVIC. These are some projects which you can mention there. Ethics of wildlife photography, those of you who have photography or watching documentaries as your hobbies, this could be a potential question. Because these are the issues. The rise of social media has fueled competition among wildlife photographers and increased pressure to create a viral image lowering down of cost of cameras, baiting wild animals for perfect photos. Most of the photos, the good photos that you see, they are after baiting wild animals. 
but that food is not appropriate for unique shots animals are provoked camera flashes are not good for animals sensitive animals their food choices and mating behavior is altered great indian bustard which is critically endangered only about 70 or 80 individuals are left in the world yeah, that too just in rajasthan it is a very very shy bird and any human presence or any presence of any other species if it is it notices it will not mate and that is why its population is declining geo tagging picture it gives a clue to the poachers for poaching so this is the way forward then cat family this was the question that i was asked difference between the big cats so these are the five big cats what are the differences the differences between jaguar leopard cheetah then tiger conservation the basics of tiger conservation why are we so obsessed with tiger conservation what are the steps that have been taken they are not complete so pardon me for that the tiger relocation process what will you do if facing a tiger how does a tiger mark its territory some famous tigers from the area that you belong to lion conservation leopard conservation why is leopard conservation important because it is an extremely versatile animal what are the steps that have been taken leopards straying into human habitation then cheetah reintroduction some things about why cheetah was reintroduced spending so much things so take with the pen said early as it's only section 62 central government can declare any animal from schedule 2 as women's extinct what are some extinct species of india zoos the ethical concerns uh, surrounding the zoos environmental issues i could not write climate change this gives my personal details situational awareness questions can you work without salary how will you tackle corruption as an ifs how will you deal with naxalism what have you done for environmental uh, conservation as pcc have three things that you would suggest to the government what if local activities are detrimental to forest what if local contractor as well forest staff the status of forest world these are a few questions some proverbs based on plants these are in hindi controversial issues at that time not relevant now some of those might be these are uh, a few humble notes that were prepared by me you might find them uh, helpful do you want me to share them yes sir yes sir yes sir yes, okay okay do you already have them have they been shared no in the group anyone has already seen those notes no okay okay sandeep you have seen pranay okay so they have already been shared i will i'll uh, share them again i'll ask uh, uh, the guys to share it again in the group and those of you who are not added i'll add you also okay so let's close the session if there are the, uh, no more doubts hello sir uh, i have a question hello yes who is there Nish- nishant yes yes nishant so okay, now if i are uh, when the pasta was given uh, will there be change in the record like uh, will it be transferred from forest uh, Land your voice is not clear can you uh, uh, can you come a little closer or i can't understand what you are saying hello yes yes nishant sir in fra act when the patas mm-hmm. are given to the tribals mm-hmm. will there be change in the uh, in the label like will, uh, will it be changed from the forest land to the revenue land or like it will continue as a forest land yes they have a right to be changed to revenue land but uh, i mean again there are only use rights they can live there they can cultivate but they cannot sell that land 
that land cannot be sold that can that land can only be in, inherited if there is no uh, i mean uh, no offspring the inheritance stops and that land comes back to the forest department they have a right for that land to be converted that forest village to be converted to a revenue village just for the sake of uh, documents just for the sake of getting connections utilities and all those but they cannot sell that land yeah it is only limited transfer in that sense so in that way like aren't we chipping okay. the uh, chipping of the forest land like uh, anyway from 24% what we have now don't we think like uh, we are trying to reduce it and have a other target where we have to increase by 33% mm-hmm. yes definitely this is being done yeah, because but uh, you have to see the other side also these were the people who have been historically living in the forest they were enjoying those rights they were living some of them were living in harmony with the forest for example the soligas yeah, uh, they were living in the uh, brt wildlife sanctuary in karnataka you might have heard uh, of uh, uh, that case so in uh, in other areas well, while the Okay sir okay you might have seen one video doing the rounds on social media recently where the uh, locals they told the forest department about a tree that holds water and when forest department uh, chopped the, down that tree water a stream of water came up so they they sometimes have more knowledge so their rights have to manage the forest if their presence is detrimental we already have uh, section 4 of uh, section 4 1 of fra where their rights can be modified or resettled giving a suitable okay, passage okay. thank you thank you so much okay 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 nishan yes sandeep the local elders and he has got some fake certificates what do you do you go to google earth google earth has images for the last at least for the last 3 decades so you zoom to that area that parcel of land that he is claiming and then move that slider to 1990 or 2000s if you see there is a change and he has occupied recent then that claim is rejected remote sensing satellite the data from the snpp or vir the sensors of nasa all the technology has to be used only the genuine claims have to be approved the false claims should not be approved the mafia should not get the land only the genuine claimants the genuine tribals the poor tribals they should get the land clear okay anyone else okay let's call it a day then I hope the session was helpful. If you have any doubts, you can contact me. You can, you can uh, get my contact number and contact me. Yeah, I'll try to uh, respond to your queries as soon as possible, as and when I get time. Okay. If I reply late, please bear with me. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.